Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Magic Shine Montier 1200 bike front headlight. Magic Shine's Montier series of bike lights are well known for their powerful output and affordability. The new Montier 1200 that we have here takes it to the next level with an almost unbelievable 12,000 lumen output. Not only is this one of the brightest lights Magic Shine has produced to date, but also incorporates an asymmetric lens into the central LED for a beam cutoff, which is almost unheard of. As far as packaging, you can see nice and simple black and orange color scheme that Magic Shine is known for. You have this nice glossy representation of the light on front. No additional plastic or any windows on here, which is nice, so a little more environmentally friendly. It's a heavy box as well, so you do really feel the weight. And on the back, you have a nice description of the light and then some of the specs printed on it. We'll go ahead and open this box up and go over the specs. So retail price on this is $549.99. You get 12,000 lumens of output, which is really almost comical. It's way more than anybody would ever really need. You get that beam cutoff lens, so it's actually a multi-lens design. So you have five LEDs here with the center one having that beam cutoff. And then the other one's having a more standard spot beam style design. You have a 10 amp hour battery. So this is their flagship battery pack. Very large and gives you a lot of capacity. And you also get their wireless remote, as well as the customization by the Magishine app. So you can see inside as far as what you get with it. You get the light. It's a wired setup, obviously. So you get a nice dual-sided mount. So this will mount directly on your handlebars. You get the cable attached to it. We get the wireless remote, which is the same design we've seen with all of Magishine lights. And that has their basic velcro strap so very lightweight plastic construction we have the light itself again we're big and heavy you have the giant battery pack which can attach directly using that cable we have their velcro straps which attach the battery pack to your bike we have a usb type c charging cable so it's actually usb to c we have additional straps here for actually helmet mounting this light. A little warranty card. Get some, I think, rubber spacers for the out front mount. And then this nice helmet mount. So this is a plastic bracket, and that uses the Velcro, uh, the fabric straps to attach the light. You just unbolt it from that mount and then attach it to this. So a pretty slick setup overall, and you can see you have everything you need to start riding immediately. Now let's take a look at the weight of the Montier 1200. So the headlight by itself, with just the bolts attached to it, and the cable comes in at 275, so definitely on the heavier side given the size. The out front bracket with the two bolts attached to it, that is 59 grams. You can also use the helmet mount which is just a simple piece of plastic and then requires these two nylon straps. So that comes in at right about 28 grams. The big heavy part of this system though is the battery pack. So this thing is massive. I put it on here with the Velcro straps. It comes in at almost 912, so over two grams, so quite heavy. And then you have the Bluetooth remote, which is very simple, just plastic with a little Velcro strap and that's only 15 grams. Visually, the Montier 12000 takes Magic Shine's traditional five LED Montier design and adds an aspherical lens to the center. Not only does this give this light a more unique appearance, but also means you won't be blinding oncoming traffic, which is a really cool feature, especially at this output level. This is a wired setup, so that means you have a battery pack, and then you have the headlight with a wire that connects the two. That keeps the headlight itself pretty lightweight, so you can mount this on your handlebar or helmet and then just run the wire down to the big battery. You can see with the lens designs, very unique design. You have an aspherical lens. And what that means is as I rotate this, you can actually see how the LED distorts. And what this does, it generates a very sharp beam cutoff, something you typically see with European lights. I'm really impressed to see with a 12,000 lumen light. So with this, you have a nice center light and that's great for road cycling or anywhere where you have oncoming traffic. 
Then you have traditional spotlights all around it, which is what the Montier lights typically have. Each one of these has a different beam angle, so combined, these give you a nice long distance visibility, while that center one is more of a floodlight. And combined, you can run these all together or just the center one in the two optional modes. You can see with this much power, you have a lot of heat that'll get generated from this, so that's why there's a lot of heat fins in here, so it's an all aluminum body. You can see a pass through there, fins in the back, and then all of the little cutouts in the aluminum body on the sides and top. This ensures you get a lot of airflow through it. You have basic branding, you have the Montier 12000 here, Magic Shine, and otherwise a nice metal aluminum body. On the back, you have a basic display, so if I press the button, this will actually display the battery status if it was connected to the battery, and then you can control the headlight with this power button. Mounting on this is really cool as well, so you have this dual arm design. So it's similar to an out front mount, but because this is so big, it actually has its own dedicated one. So you put this around your stem, and then it puts it directly in front of the bike. So with this, you could potentially run a computer on top of it as well, as this tucks it underneath. You can see it has two bolts, so you can actually rotate this up and down. And then this really cool thumb screw design, so I can actually loosen that. And then that'll allow me to do angle adjustments, and then I can tighten it down just by hand. And you can see it's nice and stiff. So really cool feature. These also have a hinge design, just like the Magic 9 TTA mount. So you can see one bolt that runs from the top, and then a hinge. So you just open this up, put it on your bike, and then flip it over. So very easy to use, and you just need an Allen key to set it up. You can also set this up on the helmet, but it is a big light. So I think it's a little bit better as a a handlebar mount, especially with the beam cutoff, as it doesn't really make sense to have a beam cutoff and then stick it on your head, which would just create more glare. You can see the wire setup on this as well. It's different from the other ones, so it actually has a triangular design with its yellow setup, and you can see it actually is keyed, so there's this little uh, slot here, and you want to line them up when you're connecting it, so when I connect the two, I just make sure it's centered to the bottom, it would have been nice if Magishine had made it more obvious, so there's no outside indicator of where to actually insert it, but you have to look inside, then match up those keys. As far as the battery, this thing is huge, so 10,000 milliamps. It's one of their largest batteries, and you can see it's just a very big and bulky item. So almost two pounds on its own, and this has a lot of technology in here to ensure you don't overheat and it can provide enough charge for the light. You can see they've kept it pretty simple, so it's almost a bluish finish with Magic Shine on here, metal body, and then these rubber covers. It's a non-serviceable design, so if any of the internal cells go bad, you actually have to just throw the whole thing away. And it still uses a basic Velcro strap design. So you have a big rubber gasket underneath it, then you run the Velcro through the supplied slots to hold it against your bike. So it's pretty big and you want to make sure you mount this in a safe location. They've also simplified the interface. With the other Montier lights, you have removable gaskets. With this one, they kept it really basic. So you just have these little covers here. If I open up one, you can see a nice thick gasket. You have a USB type C slot for charging the light, or you can use this as a power bank for other devices. You line it up again. A little bit hard to get in, but once you get it in, you can see it's nice and flush. And then you have the cable attachment. Again, you can see it's keyed with that little notch there. You can also check the battery status. So it has a four LED indicator here. So right now you can see there's only three, but if this is fully charged, you would see a fourth one there. And this is just a power battery status checker. So you don't actually have to press this, but if you want to double check, you can quickly press it. If I connect this to the actual light, then we can go over the user interface. So you can see once it's connected, now I have the battery status there, and I can do the battery status here. So pretty nice setup, and you also have the remote pairing it as easy as holding both buttons until the lights flash and then turn on the light. So a single press or hold will turn on the light, and you can see you basically have two modes. You have the road cycling mode where you just have the floodlight, and then a double press will turn on the spot mode, which turns on everything. And then within these two, you have four modes. So low, medium, high. 
and then low, medium, high again, with an eco mode as the lowest setting. So the interface is very simple, single press or double press, and then hold to turn it off. With the wireless remote, you also get some new features. So the circle button acts just like the button on the actual device. So I'll cycle through low, medium, high. Then you can double press it to switch modes. So you can see now we're in spot and then the eco, low, medium, high. There's also two flash modes. So if I double press the square button, I can access this. You can't access the flash mode through the device itself unless you use the Magishine app to reprogram it. So you can see we have this daytime flash, so keep the center on and it flashes the other ones. And then you have the full flash, which is just the outer. So I think this is daytime and then the other one is a nighttime flash. So you can still see in front of you while being visible. And then pressing the square any other time will go on to the full 12,000 lumen mode. So pretty cool setup and that means if you're riding somewhere and you need power right now, you just press the button and then boom, you have it. There are four different modes in the low beam setting and then four modes in the high beam that range from eco all the way up to high. As you can see, the low beam mode has a nice trapezoidal beam shape with a nice sharp beam cutoff that you typically see with European lights. High mode goes all the way up to 2500 lumen but still gives you 10 hours of runtime, which is really impressive. In the high beam mode, you get the center light with the additional four spot LED so you can see much wider beam and you can see further along. Medium is 6,000 lumens and then high gives you the full 12,000 lumen at two and a half hour runtime, which is still pretty good given the output. There are also two flash modes, which are a little bit overkill as they're 3,000 lumen, but they have tons of runtime. You have a day version and a night version. So it's good for daytime riding or even nighttime potentially. Great thing about this light is you have a dual beam design so you can see with the high beam mode, you can use that on the trail to really light everything up around you. You can hit the remote to go to full 12,000 lumen and the camera really doesn't do it justice. It's pretty crazy. Lights up everything around you and is definitely overkill. But if you're doing a lot of high speed downhill descending or you're riding really far, it's nice to have all that power. The great thing about the light is though, once you go back on the trail, you can switch back to the low mode, which will prevent it from having tons of glare. So you can see here, we switch back to the low beam mode and you have this nice trapezoidal beam shape that's very similar to European lights. So with this one, you can easily adjust the angle and you won't have any glare for oncoming traffic. So if you're doing a long commute or a race across America style riding, this is a great light as you have tons of runtime. Even the medium mode is more than enough as the high mode is 2,500 lumen, which is tons of power. And with a 10 hour runtime, you're really not gonna have a charge very often. You can see the battery status illuminated right on the rear of the light. So you can always check the status very easily. And although the battery pack is huge, you get a lot of runtime, so it's a nice setup, and the remote is also pretty intuitive to use as well. Even the medium mode is good enough, and then when you're on the trail, you want to switch to the high beam mode to get that additional illumination. It's a really impressive light. They've added tons of power here, but added a nice lens design to ensure you're not always blinding people. So it's a good light you can actually use on and off the trail. So you can ride to the trail, use the full power, and then switch back to the low beam mode on your ride home. Now let's take a look at the Magishine app. With this app, you can actually customize the low beam and high beam settings, and you can add your own and rearrange them however you please. You can see they've actually improved the app a little bit. It's still a little clumsy, but you have a four tab menu on the left side with the slide out menu. So you can actually set my devices, profile, version upgrade, and contact us. Within my devices, you can connect the light. You can see it comes up with sort of a cryptic name, but if you click device settings, you can see it says Montier 1200 as the model name. Within this one, you can see we have no modes currently. It's profile one, but zero light modes. So I click add. I can actually add a light mode. So you can see light mode one. You get a nice little radial control. So you can adjust the brightness, constant modes or flash modes. You can also preserve that two level menu. So you can have low beam and high beam. So it will do just the center one or all of them together as it does from the factory. So it's kind of cool. You could rearrange it if you really want it flash after a constant mode, or if you want it high, low instead of low, medium, high. And with this, it's a little bit clumsy though. You can see if I click off in the wrong spot, it just hides it. And then you can also delete the mode and add additional ones. So kind of a cool feature. I wish you could control the individual LEDs, but you can see it's just the inner or all of them together. You can't really do a firefly type mode where you can flash them individually or anything like that. Just a simple setting. It is kind of cool, but a little bit clumsy. You can set up multiple profiles. So 
if I go to the side, I click profile, there's another add button here so I can add another profile, maybe mountain bike. And then go back, so now I have two modes. I go back to my devices, device setting, and this is where it's really clumsy, so I click profile one. And then profile one is actually enabled to switch to the mountain bike one we just added. You have to click on it and now you can see it has zero modes and I can go add one. So it's still pretty clumsy and you can't control individual LEDs, it's all in sync. And I think the factory ones are good enough, but it is a cool feature and hopefully they add more capabilities to it. Now let's compare the Montier 12,000 with other lights on the market. We've done a lot of Magistein reviews, so we actually have the Montier 8000 and you can see just how much smaller it is. One of the big reasons this is so much larger is that aspherical lens, it just simply takes up a lot more space than a simple spotlight would. So you can see side by side, it's definitely about 50% bigger in each dimension. You can also see the battery size on this is much larger. So this is also the 10,000 milliamp, but it's a lower voltage. So this is 7.2 while this is 14.4. And the higher voltage obviously lets you run these higher powers. So you can see it almost feels like it's half the size. Same length, so it probably has the same number of cells in there, but more tech and technology in here to ensure you get the high voltage you need for the higher output. So that's one reason you should really be careful. Like on Amazon, you can find 12,000 uh, lumen lights, but they probably have a tiny battery, which means it's not really legit. With this one, you're definitely paying a price for the higher output, and that means a big battery pack. Magshine also has STVZO lights, like the ZX Pro. You can see similar aspherical lens, and you get that nice sharp beam cutoff, but this is about 200 lumens, so not particularly bright. So it's really cool to see this kind of technology in a bigger light. Magshine has been pushing this technology though in their other lights like the Evo 1700. So a really cool light, almost looks like a retro TV, especially when you flip it upside down. But you have the same lens, so you get that little distortion on the inside. But this is an all-in-one design, so self-contained. And at 1700 lumens, it is bright, but not nearly as bright as the 12,000, obviously. Then there are other, also other lights like the Magishine 1500S. This is the Ulti 1500S. Do you get a removable battery? Very simple lens with a DRL, but it does have an OLED screen, which would have been cool here. So the Montier 12,000, you get a lot of their cool tech in a very high output package. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Manshine Montier 12,000. What you like about it is you have amazing output. With 12,000 lumen output, you can really light up the whole road and it's one of the brightest lights we've ever used. What's amazing about the light is though you also get a sharp beam cutoff in the low beam mode, which means you're not gonna blind oncoming traffic and you have up to 1700 lumen output, which is more than enough for most road riding. You also have a strong and adjustable metal handlebar bracket with an adjustable thumb screw, so you can actually adjust the angle on the fly without a tool. The main negatives with the light is the fact you have a confusing Magishine app. This lets you customize the mode, but it's not very useful and really difficult to navigate. You also have a key battery cable, so it can only be inserted in one orientation. So you really do have to line those up and there's no external marker to indicate where they are. Also with all this power, you have a very big and large wired battery pack. It's almost two pounds. So you do have to be aware of the size and weight of it. Taking everything into account, we give the Montier 12,000 a 9.7 out of 10. It's amazing power and great lens design. It's great to see Magishine do more of these sharp beam cutoffs while adding a lot of power so you can actually use this light on the road or on the trail very easily. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.